Well, good evening. Well, good evening. There they are. I was told on the service order that that was the voice of God. That would introduce me. I always assumed uh, God's voice would sound more like Morgan Freeman, but we'll, uh, we'll roll with the punches. So honored uh, that you decided to join us this evening uh, as the uh, voice in the sky. I mentioned my name is Craig Cackley. I have the privilege of serving as the lead pastor at Church of the Four Corners who meets here at the City House on Sunday mornings. And also myself and a group of amazing people, we help launch the City House. We get a lot of questions about the distinction of Church of the Four Corners and the, the City House. I thought I take, might just take a moment this evening and explain a little bit of the heart behind uh, this building. The mission of the City House is to provide environments that cultivate connections to strengthen the city. So we opened up the City House component of our building back in September, and honestly, we've been blown away at the amazing partnerships that have formed organically um, already. I'd love to just share a few of those quickly. The first is an amazing nonprofit called Corey's Network. And Corey's Network exists to resource and educate uh, and really support the families of those who have been affected by homicide. Another partnership we've formed at the City House is with an organization called Lullaby of Hope, which ministers to women and supports and encourages women who've gone through miscarriages. We've worked with the Raytown School District. We've worked through Speaks Chapel um, with uh, different educators and non-for-profits, and it has been an amazing privilege thus far. The future of the City House, we're also very excited about. Our plan is uh, this fall to open up a coffee shop that would be full-time Monday through Saturday to once again better serve our community. And we feel like that's a great need on this part of our city to provide a place where you can have quality connection. And then the longer-term vision in the next few years would be to open up a co-working space on the western part of our building with 15 to 20 offices, um, some flex officing space to just further help generate uh, the economic growth and the entrepreneurial spirit of our city. And so that's really the heart behind why the City House exists. We felt strongly as a church that the way that we would steward well this facility was to use it to not only have a place where we could worship, but also a place to serve and to benefit this community that we love so dearly. So I also this evening have the privilege of introducing our speaker tonight. And uh, I'm not sure where she's at, but oh, there you are, Eileen. You know, I was thinking about, you know, this week, past week when I had the chance to introduce you, and I had this humorous epiphany that there's a lot of commonalities that are shared between local government and ministry. Um, one of them being that we have the privilege to offend people on a daily basis. It's a pretty amazing thing. Uh, secondly, no one gets into either of our industries for the money. And I think the last, and this one is just so clear, is that no one lasts very long unless they genuinely care for the people that they serve. And I don't know about you, I'm so grateful that we have a mayor that really loves this city. You know, it's not a job, like clearly this is a calling for you. You know, as a pastor, you put me to shame how often you are out in the community. It seems like every day you're at a different event. You're at a new grand opening of a business or you're at a neighborhood gathering, casting further the vision of our city or you're supporting a farmer's market. You have integrated yourself into this community. And so as a resident of Independence for over a decade, as a parent who have uh, two kids and just a quick shout out to Bryant Elementary School, uh, and the Independent School District, a uh, third of, of my kids in a few years. I'm just very proud to live here. I'm very proud to be a part of a community that uh, is clearly going places, that is very clearly moving in the right direction. And I think, I think people are discovering that, that this is a very unique place to live with rich history. And I'm a firm believer in the axiom that everything rises and falls on leadership. And I believe that much of this progress has been due to your vision, uh, your hard work and your dedication to this city. And so without further ado, could we make welcome our speaker this evening, Ms. Eileen Ware.
Thank you, Craig, for that really lovely introduction, and thanks to the City House for allowing us to have this space today. Um, when Craig was, the church had been around for a little while, and they were really looking for a location. And he came to my office and he said, we're thinking about doing this concept where we would have this space that the community could use. And would that be okay with you? And I said, yeah, that would, be, that would be just great. That would be totally fine with me. So thank you for allowing us to be here. Um, thank you to your great band for entertaining us this evening and the Scion Drumline uh, who was here earlier this evening, and as well, I want to uh, thank uh, the Roastery, who a few weeks ago invited me to come down to their facility in Kansas City and create our own coffee blend for this evening. So we've done that. I hope you've been enjoying it. We've, we named it Queen City, and um, so we have a few uh, bags available if anybody is interested in purchasing some Queen City coffee to take home with you. Um, before I get started, as always, I want to acknowledge um, those who we work alongside every single day. Our city council members, Kurt Doherty, Mike Huff, and Tom Van Camp are here, so thank you for being here. <laughs> Our city manager, Zach Walker, um, is here with us this evening. Mayor David Slater and Mayor Carson Ross and his wife, Eloise, and as always, last and certainly not least, um, my husband, the first gentleman of independence, Tom Weir. So now on with the speech. Independence is often described as a big, small town. Our city is the fifth largest city in the state of Missouri, and nationally we are among only 4% of U.S. cities that have a population of 50,000 or more. From 1950 to 1970, Independence grew from a town of 35,000 35, people to a city of over 110,000 people. And today we have a population of 120,000 people. So by the numbers, Independence is not a small town. But we have preserved and fostered the attributes of a small town that America identifies with, then lives in our hearts and imaginations and the memories of our citizens and visitors. Whether you trace your hometown roots back over generations or are just discovering independence for the first time, our city evokes those feelings of comfort, familiarity, history, and tradition. Independence is unique, that our story is so deeply part of the American story. From our early days as the Queen City of the Trails to today, thousands of visitors and residents have added their own chapters. The freedom to explore, the courage to take risks, and the confidence in knowing we can overcome staggering challenges to reach new frontiers is in our name, and it defines our attitude, independence. We began as a small trading spot along the Missouri River and grew to a jumping off point for a major historic population shift. We are the hometown of a studious young man who could not afford a formal education, but was unwilling to resign himself to the life of a farmer, who despite multiple business failures would become an American hero and a local icon that we know simply as Harry. We are a community that shows what a great American story means. Our history is a powerful chronicle of self-reliance, determination, and fearlessness. Our citizens often identify with these qualities and are fueled by the belief that audacious dreams, dreams can come true here because they have come true here. Independence history is relevant today because we use it to create what the future should be. Our city is growing and changing. We are welcoming more people who are newcomers to our city and newcomers to our country. Their connection with our rich past is unlikely to be understood in the pages of a history book, but in the routine of daily life. 
from Eastland to Englewood, Farview to Fairmount, Susquehanna to Saddle Ridge, and all places in between. People are adding to the great American story of independence in new and exciting ways. Two years ago, the city engaged in multiple strategic partners and citizen groups to develop a community strategic plan, Independence for All. Independence for All provides a roadmap to achieve the vision of positioning independence as a nationally recognized city, seeped in a unique history and sense of place that boasts quality neighborhoods, 21st century jobs, a growing economy, and a safe, family-friendly community that is culturally diverse. In year one, we achieved 20% of our stated goals. In year two, we stayed the course and have met more than 40% of our goals. The community goals are clear. Provide excellent customer service, grow the economy, improve the safety and quality of the community, and do it in a fiscally responsible way with an eye towards the future. The city's goal to be more customer focused depends upon improved customer service and effective internal and external communications. In 2008, we launched the inaugural Citizens Academy as part of our customer service and communication strategy. The first class of more than 20 independence residents and business owners participated in an eight-week program going behind the scenes of various city departments and interacting one-on-one -on -one with city employees. The class was made up of local influencers that represent diverse populations within our city and who have demonstrated civic leadership by volunteering with the city department, serving on a city board or commission, a local nonprofit board, or simply by engaging with us through social media. These men and women are the eyes and ears of our community. Through the Citizens Academy, we learned what citizens like and dislike in our operations and policy, which helps the council make better decisions and it helps our staff improve services. We, can, we counted on the participants to share the knowledge they gained with their friends, neighbors, coworkers, and social networks. This year, we are having open enrollment for the Citizens Academy and will accept up to 24 people into the program. Community engagement through public events and digital platforms is an ongoing priority. We continue to evaluate the city website and all social media pages to deliver the content that is important to the public. Growth and engagement for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Nextdoor exceeded goals in all four quarters of 2018, indicating that the news we are sharing is relevant and reaching a broad audience. Citizen engagement and digital media are cost-effective ways to share information and an example of how we are innovating to conserve tax dollars. There are a number of strategies outlined in Independence for All that ensure the city finances are stable today and sustainable to meet future needs. The way municipal services are funded is changing rapidly, and cities must adapt to these economic shifts. Your city council is addressing the new realities by controlling long-term costs, engaging in long-range financial planning and decision-making, and increasing operational and financial efficiencies. A citywide employee salary study was completed and implemented to verify that all city staff are compensated fairly with wages and benefits. Like every business, we are competing to recruit the highest quality, most talented workforce. Providing good wages, benefits, and an attractive workplace culture puts us at an advantage. Independence, power, and light is a huge community asset that impacts the city's financial health, economic development activities, and the quality of life in independence. This year, we completed the Master Energy Plan and embarked on a cost of service study to guide future decisions surrounding power production and delivery. 
Over the past few years, we have methodically retired several legacy systems that were way past their useful life. New software systems have been implemented and, and excuse me, new software systems have been implemented and they are already paying dividends in dramatically improved security, accuracy, and efficiency. As we all experienced, however, these upgrades were not without challenges. The new utility billing system, new finance system, and a new HR management system were all brought online in 2018. To say the least, the transition to the new utility billing system did not go well and created a lot of frustration for some of our customers. We will continue to closely monitor all of our new technologies to ensure they are operating properly and providing real benefits to our employees and our citizens. Our great American story abounds with tales of trailblazers and innovators who came to independence in search of prosperity. It holds a place in our nation's history as a city that inspires exploration and bold new ideas and has always been populated with people who value hard work and creativity. Our economic growth strategies build on these strengths, the willingness to work hard and try new things. Increasing the total prosperity of the community means increasing median income and attracting and retaining quality jobs. Two major successes for 2018 were raising median household income to $50,000 and population to 120,000. We aspired to reach these milestones by the year 2020, so achieving our income and population targets two years ahead of schedule is truly something we're celebrating. Sustaining this rate of growth will hinge on our continued efforts to develop the local workforce that is prepared for today's in-demand careers. Independence Works 2025 leverages local resources to identify obstacles to employment and implement new strategies or improve existing systems to better connect independence residents to independence employers. The collaborative effort between the city, educators, industries, innovators and entrepreneurs, social service and faith organizations, and employment support services is designed to narrow the gap between job seekers and employers. Significant progress has been made by addressing inadequate public transportation and insufficient digital inclusion. Across the region, these stand out as major hurdles for people struggling to get and keep a job. Your independent city council stepped up to these challenges by supporting funding to extend Indy bus service by one hour on most routes, providing riders with better access to jobs, and by deploying free public Wi-Fi on every bus. Solving the employment divide is a regional issue and part of Casey Rising, the regional plan for prosperity. Independence has taken a local approach by developing independenceworks.com. Indupworks.com is a custom job search engine that allows applicants to find employment leads in the city of Independence based on specific needs such as schedule flexibility and access to public transportation and childcare. The site also directs users to local job training and educational resources to help people improve their employment options through additional coursework, skills training, and career coaching. Planning for future development that supports the community vision was a big part of the last year. Imagine Independence 2040 was completed, concluding a multi-year internal and external effort to create the new comprehensive development plan that reflects how citizens want independence to look and function into the next decades. 
Citizens of all ages are looking for more recreational activities and new ways to experience their city. The city was successful in securing funding for regional trail initiatives to meet this goal, including the Truman Trail project connecting the Truman Library to downtown. We are also working closely with the Truman Library, MoDOT, and neighbors in the McCoy neighborhood to redesign the 24 Highway Bridge and, and underpass at Delaware Street. This bridge is scheduled for replacement and bringing different ideas and expertise to the table gives us a chance to create an impressive entryway to the Presidential Library and make walking to the library from downtown safer and more attractive. Certainly, a highlight of 2018 was opening the award-winning Independence Uptown Market, as promised in time for the Santa Caligon Days Festival. The Kansas City Business Journal has selected Uptown Market as a recipient of the prestigious Capstone Real Estate Award for Community Projects. This is the second time in three years that Independence has been honored with a Capstone Award previously winning in 2017 in the green design category for the Independence Utility Center. The farmer's market and event space have truly elevated not only this historic square, but our entire city. And it has been a huge success. In the five months it has been open, Uptown Market has hosted more than 40 public and private events and 40 classes and programs. Independence continues to prove that our leadership organizations are aligned, and together we have completed game-changing projects like the Uptown Market and launched programs that over the long haul will transform our city. To become the nationally recognized city we envision, we must also look outward and promote independence to industries and home buyers. Creating a superior business environment is critical to success, and we are proud to work side by side with the EDC and other community partners to make independence competitive for businesses looking to start up, grow, or locate in the region. Late last year, the council took a first step in making our city more attractive to businesses by voting to reduce electric utility rates by 2% across the board. This not only had an immediate positive impact on ratepayers, but signaled our commitment to continue to make IPL the cleanest, most reliable, and most competitive utility service now and into the future. Building a quality city is the biggest and most complex goal of independence for all. These are the everyday experiences that affect how we live in independence and how we feel about it. Improving quality means reducing blight, upgrading the visual appearance, reducing crime and disorder, increasing the perception of safety, and ensuring neighborhoods are safe, attractive, and offer a variety of housing choices. The City Council has focused on specific strategies to move the needle on the quality of our city. First is focusing on downtown. Independence has a one-of-a-kind downtown area containing the Truman Library and Truman Home, the historic Courthouse Square, the Englewood Arts District, Fairmount, Maywood, and nearly all of our heritage tourism sites, like the National Frontiers Trails Museum. Many towns have traditions that are passed from generation to generation, but precious few have as many stories of such historic proportions as independence. No matter where you live in town, the heart of independence matters to you. We know this because you told us. The most recent citizen survey results show that more than 91% of respondents agree or strongly agree that preserving historic sites is important. 
at least 85% agree or strongly agree with maintaining the city's historic neighborhoods and the historic character of the square. Our research conducted for our city branding and tourism marketing confirmed these same results. The council created the Downtown Redevelopment Coordinating Committee. The Citizen Committee reviewed 16 separate plans for portions of the downtown area and consolidates the best ideas into one recommendation. The committee met for over a year and in late in 2018 presented a funding plan for $200 million of public and private improvements that will spur economic development and job creation, promote tourism, walkability and health, remove blight and attract private investment. The City Council adopted the recommendations and subsequently formed the Independence on a Roll Working Group, made up of city staff and council members, as well as representatives from the Chamber and EDC. The job of the working group is to pursue and accomplish the various tasks and projects recommended by the Downtown Redevelopment Committee. Second is housing. Independence was the first city in the region to require internal inspections of rental properties. 2018 marked the one year anniversary of the program. In year one, the number of registered units increased from 8,000 to more than 17,000 units, and we were able to license 925 more landlords. We achieved more than 90% voluntary compliance from landlords and received zero complaints from tenants about the inspection program. Since June of 2017, more than 3,000 inspections have been conducted to ensure that the units make, meet basic life safety requirements. Our third strategy to improve overall quality in our city is public safety. The City Council designated funding for five additional police officers in the 2018-2019 budget to add a new street crimes unit. The specialized police unit is responsible for proactively targeting things like high crime hotspots, repeat offenders, disorderly houses, and vagrancy. While we are optimistic that the additional officers will stem the types of nuisance crimes that have a negative impact on our neighborhoods, the personnel needs at IPD far outpace available funding. As we plan for the upcoming budget, fully staffing our current operations requires adding 33 new sworn officers and civilian support staff at a cost of $3.5 million annually. There is no dedicated revenue to provide our officers with the additional support they need to protect our homes and workplaces. Regardless of our current revenues, we are preparing for growth in our police force. Work is currently underway to explore the possibility of creating additional public safety facilities at the geographic center of independence. There is not enough room to grow at IPD headquarters on Memorial Drive. Adding personnel is challenging, given the constraints and the condition of the building. The jail is outdated, undersized, and unsafe for our employees. Municipal Court is located within City Hall, which limits our ability to accommodate night court or weekend hours. The chance to expand public safety facilities, including the potential for a regional crime lab, is a step forward in reducing crime and disorder. We can improve public safety with strong community commitment and strategic partnerships. Nowhere has this been more evident than in the reduction of crime in the Hawthorne neighborhood over the past year. A collaborative group of law enforcement agencies, 
Independence and Fort Osage School Districts, Community Services League, Boys and Girls Clubs, and Hawthorne Residents and Management has been meeting to improve security and services in the area. In one year, incidents of violent crime have been reduced by 37%. Public safety and the quality of our built environment will be top considerations as we plan for 2019. Voters defeated both the local use tax and the state gas tax in 2018, but the need to improve public infrastructure and services has not gone away. The City Council is concentrating resources on key corridors with an eye towards improving not only streets, but sidewalks, curbs, lighting, and wayfinding. Enhancing these assets improves both walkability and safety and has a very positive financial and social benefit by connecting residents and visitors to our local businesses and tourism attractions. We are in the process of completing a comprehensive historic site assessment that ultimately will recommend a plan to fund maintenance and enhancement of our precious historic sites. Reducing trash and litter from the public realm is a key comment repeated on several citizen satisfaction surveys and an ongoing topic of conversation with many of our community groups. We plan to partner again with the Chamber of Commerce and area school districts on a citywide cleanup program to remove trash and litter from locations around town. Aesthetics are important, but we must now go beyond the visual appeal and address the mix of housing types and real estate values in every neighborhood. Over the next year, our community will be asked to engage in a process to create a master housing strategy. Quality housing will increase the number of jobs and residents in independence. While our median income and population are experiencing historic growth, still less than 40% of residents who are employed work in the city of independence. My next economic development goal is to increase the number of residents working in independence over the next two years by spurring more and better employment opportunities within our city limits. The successes of 2008 are now recorded in our great American story, and a new chapter is ready to be written. What we reached for in 2019 and beyond will be driven by the citizens and what matters most deeply to them. There are some tough decisions to be made in the coming year that will require candid community conversations to face the challenges that are preventing us from being the city that we want to be. Throughout history, independence has maintained a strong sense of community that unifies the chapters of the past and those yet to come and gives our large city its familiar hometown feel. It is our greatest asset and makes collaboration and civic engagement possible and effective. Creating and executing independence for all, building the uptown market, developing a stronger workforce, enhancing and connecting our downtown, reducing crime have all happened because of partnerships and rallying around a shared vision. People today care about our city, not just because Harry Truman lived here, but because we live here and have stories to tell. We have a short video that I'm going to share with you to end tonight's program, featuring some of our local people talking about their city in their own world, words. Thank you for being here tonight and spending your time, and thank you for the privilege of serving as your mayor. I grew up like old school, western end of independence, kids everywhere, little bitty streets. Came to uh, 
Palmer Junior Highs, was known then in 1963, grew up here, um, stayed in Independence, and uh, I left at the end of my junior year of high school, and I never really expected to be back. Great grandfather moved from uh, England in the early 1900s, you know, from a history of farmers and literally moonshine runners, uh, they settled here, uh, you know, in eastern Jackson County, and we've been here ever since. At one point, this was the west. This was the edge of the United States. The eastern boundary of Jackson County was the beginning of that last incorporated government. Of course, independence has an awesome history that we see and feel today. We are still kind of that, that, that central point, that point in eastern Jackson County where people come for commerce, where they come for uh, finances, where they come for employment. When people came to Independence, they were often looking for new opportunities or sometimes came here to get ready for that next opportunity. But other people came here, stayed here, provided the infrastructure, built their businesses around those other people. We moved to Independence because I had an opportunity to open my business here uh, and we moved here about six years ago. There's something about Independence that has the amenities of a bigger city but also kind of has a smaller hometown feel which is where we're from originally. We have all of the opportunity and the advantage of being part of a thriving metropolitan area, but we have all the perks and the, the compassion that comes with living in a small town community. Like even going into the coffee shop this morning, everybody was knowing everybody and talking to each other, so it still really had that small hometown feel. There's a strong sense of community and his, the independence history is a common thread. I think if you go back to the start of the city back in the 1800s, you know, this was the point where the pioneers loaded up their wagon and so the merchants around the square, they were loading up the goods for the trip west. And I don't think that's really changed over the, over the decades and even over the centuries because we are still kind of that, that, that central point. It's one of the things as to why we opened a business here. It's one of the reasons why uh, my family's been here 100 years and has remained and continues to, to live here um, is the people that sense of being part of something bigger than ourselves. That meant um, making sure that everyone in the community that we lived in was um, okay, that they had what they needed. The people of this community are hard workers. They have a strong work ethic. They provide um, the type of labor pool that companies need to be successful. What are other things that we can do to help other industries, to help once they get beyond the incubation stage? You know, I think there's been a lot of work done here, especially within this downtown over the last 20 years that, you know, we just weren't familiar with at the time. Um, but we just saw a, a huge potential for growth, and I think it's continued to do that. In all the communities that I've worked with over the years, I've never seen a community that comes together as a community, not only the business community, but the leadership. Um, and that's really important. For commerce, it's, it's vital. Um, it takes a community kind of working together to make this all successful. And in Independence, we get that done. One thing that I'm seeing now is that Independence is becoming an interesting juxtaposition of a very historic town that's also looking to the future, that's also working on innovative um, ideas for how to improve the lives of its citizens. We work with companies every single day and what, they, what they're challenged with is how do they keep up? A new startup, a new technology company, what we're doing with the Innovation Center Incubator. We started um, primarily as a, as a space for folks to get started, as a flexible space that folks can come in, have access to a commercial kitchen, have access to conference rooms, have access to all those physical assets that any startup business is going to need. So it's incredibly exciting to see um, other organizations, seeing the city, seeing the community, come together to see what are those other pieces? What else can we put in place to help folks in this community? I see a community that uh, continues to support its public education system, that continues to focus on preserving its past while at the same time improving and uh, rebuilding its infrastructure. We've adapted to the moves that had to be made. And that's, I think, one of the big things is, you know, if companies don't adapt to change, they don't survive. There's a lot of great American stories to be told in this community, and, um, you know, I think the next great one is, is just waiting to be told.